Hey, welcome everybody to Hope for Our Times. Let's have a really just a fantastic program for you all today. Joining me in just a minute will be our guest. And we're going to be talking about look, what's coming in the next 24 months. So check this out, uh, amongst other things. But um, central bank digital currency is being launched by SWIFT in the next 12 to 24 months. So farthest away is 24 months. They're saying 12 to 24 months in Australia. Uh, John Prescott, who's going to be joining me soon, he's been sending me info coming from Australia. And then Alex Newman uh, posted this with Liberty Sentinel. Australia Senate approves digital ID. America is next. Uh, folks, these things are coming. And uh, we need to be aware. Now, we, we have a lot more to talk about here today uh, with Kurt in just a minute. But I uh, also want to let you know that if you can join me, if you're in Southern California, I'll be in Buena Park this coming Saturday, April 6th. I'll be speaking at the Eagle Forum with Alex Newman. I hope that you all can join me there. It's going to be a terrific time. You can check out the info at hopeforourtimes.com. Again, that's the Eagle Forum uh, conference. And then uh, also coming up, uh, you, you can join us. We have a Footsteps for Paul uh, trip that's coming up. It's a tour. It's an education tour. It's just myself and Pastor Bob Probert. If you've ever been to Israel with me, then uh, you've met Bob Probert. Bob Probert, he does all my tours with me. Uh, he's brilliant. He's fantastic. Wealth of knowledge. Great to have along. He's my mentor in these types of things. And uh, so he's going to be joining us on the footsteps of the Apostle Paul. Uh, it will be an education tour. You're going to be super blessed if you go. We'll hit Ephesus. We're going to go to Patmos where Paul wasn't, but John the Apostle was. Uh, also, we'll, we'll be in Athens. We'll be in Corinth. And then we have an extension to Rome for those who want to go to Rome. So we have really exciting things coming up. And then also I'm going to ask you to pray about this is Mexico. I'll bring you Kurt in just a second. I know this long introduction to these things. But uh, we have on July 5th in Mexico, we have this great ministry opportunity. Uh, it's going to be uh, with pastors and leaders in Mexico. July 5th It's teaching, instructing, uh, going to be down there. I really appreciate your prayers and support for that because we really need to be reaching with the hope of the gospel while we still have light, right? while we still can. So that's July 5th, uh, ministering and teaching pastors and leaders in Mexico. The next day, July 5th, will be a prophecy conference. July 6th, Saturday, will be a prophecy conference. That's with myself, Brandon Holthouse, and Pastor Moises Gonzalez. And then on Sunday, I'll be staying over at the church down there in Mexico to uh, teach their Sunday morning messages. So really appreciate your prayer and support because... Listen, we talk about the second coming of Christ all the time. We talk about different signs and events that, are, that should have our attention. But the most important thing that we have is the gospel, and people need to be saved. Listen, our, our citizenship is in heaven, and uh, like you, it's like, hey, let's do everything that we can as we press toward the goal. We, we only have a little bit of time here, so we go for it with everything that we can, everything that we got. Uh, and I uh, just want to really thank you for your prayers. We need your prayers more than anything. And also your support is, uh, really need your support too. And appreciate uh, any support that you guys can give us. Uh, just helps us to be able to move forward until Jesus comes. Okay, uh, thank you for listening to me, everybody. Now Kurt Reed is joining us. Kurt, thank you for joining us. Hey, how you doing today, Tom? I'm doing good. Uh, great to Great to see you. And uh, we're going to try and get to some questions in a little bit. I know awesome. you are a busy man, um, but man, there's so much going on. And, and real quick, everybody, Kurt, uh, Pastor Kurt is pastor at Harvest Life in uh, Las Vegas. He's uh, on the opposite end of Las Vegas that Billy Crone is. Uh, Kurt's search for the Lord started as a teenager looking for meaning and purpose in life. And God revealed his need to Kurt through the book of Revelation, which to me is really cool. It was really these things, Kurt, that got me uh, interested in, in starting to wonder, you know, what the world's going on. Now, that was years ago and years ago for you. Man, you look at where we are now, how much more people are wondering 
what in the world is going on? Well, guess what? We have the answers. And so that's what we're going to talk about. But thanks, Kurt, for joining me. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a privilege, man. I, I, I love being on the program. Love uh, just having good conversation with you. So I, I, we're just going to start right out of the gate. I mean, I have a long list of things to ask you about here. I don't, we'll All see right. how many okay. we get through, how many questions we can get to. But um, central bank digital currency is to be launched by uh, SWIFT within the next 12 to 24 months. I'm going to have you talk about that. But All right. before you get there, I'm going to do something else. Okay. Okay, everybody, listen. Pastor Kurt has a new program. It's coming up here on Fridays, like uh, every few weeks, I believe it is, Kurt. Every, uh, every other week. Every other week, we have uh, Pastor Kurt and also Zach. Kurt's new program. We have a 15-second trailer. His first one is getting launched this Friday right here on Hope for Our Times. Let's roll this trailer with Pastor Kurt. 15 seconds. Let's roll it. Yeah, I like that. It makes me want to watch. I mean, it's all these different. This is cool. Oh, I, I'm excited about being able to have you on here and doing this, doing this new program with us. Um, that's coming this Friday. Um, that's a little teaser. Make sure you oh, check man. it out. We, there are so many things that I cannot wait to share. Um, just picking a, a different topic and honing in on that topic uh, for about 25 minutes or so uh, every other week. It's going to be great, and I'm really looking looking forward to it. Uh, in fact, the title, Through the Lens, I really get that from Second Peter chapter 1, because uh, we got to look at everything through the lens of, of Scripture, through the lens of God's Word and His prophetic Word. If we don't, then, then we're just news reporters. You know, and I, I didn't sign up to be a news reporter. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. So Amen. it's gonna be, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be really, really cool. Amen. There's a lot of news that gets reported, but we've got to connect the Bible. If we don't do Amen. that, then what kind of answers do we have for people? None. Just a lot of scary stuff. So. Amen. But we have answers. Hey, and and, and, and just so everyone knows, the, the title for this coming week that's coming up is Labs, Liars, and Lunatics. Labs, Liars, and Lunatics. So. I like that. Labs, Liars, and Lunatics. I can't yeah. wait. Looking forward to it. All right, Kurt. Central Bank Digital Currency with the SWIFT program coming right. in the next 12 to 24 months. So that's right. coming fast. And then I'm sure you've been following what's going on in Australia with their their ID digital tracking. Oh, yeah. That oh, has yeah. already begun. And yeah. uh, Alex Newman says, America is next. Uh, yeah. it, it is. And uh, I'm looking at this. Let's talk about SWIFT. What do you know about it? Uh, well, uh, excuse the pun, but things are moving very swiftly uh, with SWIFT, and uh, and that's not a good thing, you know. In fact, SWIFT stands for Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication, so uh, that's a big one uh, to, to take in, right? But uh, everything, so it's an acronym for that, everything is, again, moving in this direction towards a one-world economy. When you look in the Word, uh, specifically when you look in Revelation 3, 13, what do you see? You see three main things there. You see global government, you see global religion, so global government under the Antichrist, global religion, his sidekick is going to be the false prophet, and global financial system. And for there, for there to be, as you know, uh, and the viewers know, for there to be a global financial system, and that global financial system, by the way, is the means by which to bring everyone into absolute, total, complete uh, bondage, right? But it's also that which is going to provide the financial backing for the Antichrist uh, to accomplish the things that he wants to accomplish. It's, I've been saying for a long time, it's always about money and power, and uh, and he's going to have both of those uh, to the nth degree. And so when we see these things, we know, we've known for a long time, those of us that have been following Bible prophecy, that things are going to have to get away from money as we know it right now, from paper money. Of course, we know 
know, going back, those things originally were backed by, uh, uh, by gold and, and all of that. They're not any longer. Uh, but uh, so what they've been doing is they've been making money. They just kind of print it out of thin air. The more that they print the money, the more it devalues the money that's in circulation. Um, so that's a whole host of problems in and of itself. But they lack being able to control who's buying what and where and knowing what they buy and where they buy it from. When things go to a digital economy, okay, they're going to be having, going to be able to have a control that they don't have right now. And when you add to that, by the way, Tom, when you add to that, uh, artificial intelligence, AI, uh, AGI, artificial general intelligence, that's the next step up, and ASI, uh, which is artificial super intelligence, you add all of that along with quantum computing, by the way, which is moving along very quickly, you add all of these, uh, these vectors into the mix and you've got something that is truly exactly what we see when we read in the word of this complete and total uh, grip of control over mankind. Those that are not, uh, that will not at that time um, get into or, or enter into that system, they're gonna be persecuted unto the point of death. Yeah. So, uh as we look at everything that's developing, I think, if you'll hold on one second here. I didn't want to cough in front of everybody. It kind of hurts their ears. Yeah. Um, we know that a system is coming according to the Bible that no one can escape, right? right. Uh, we do know there are some people also that will survive. The Antichrist's kingdom will end after seven years, so they'll survive to the end and populate the planet. We get that. Uh, but ultimately, the system you described is what the book of Revelation is. So what is the difference between artificial intelligence and artificial general intelligence, AGI? And then I'm going to ask you about super intelligence, too. Mm -hmm. So... So the whole thing with artificial general intelligence, uh, it really takes things to another level where uh, basically the, uh, the computers, the, the bots, the robots would be able to think at a human kind of level. Okay, so it takes things to another, and you know, this is really interesting too, and again, uh, we don't know exactly how things are going to go down. I mean, we can only uh, theorize on, on some of these things from, from this point, but when, again, when you look at the image of the beast, right, and that uh, there's going to be this, this appearance of, of life given there to the image of the beast as well, is A-G-I-A-S-I -I going to be involved in that or not? I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, certainly it's going to be very, uh, very evil, very wicked, uh, very demonic uh, in all of that, uh, no doubt about it. But um, I, if anything, Tom, this is, this is what I see, is that it's setting the, the world up, the Christ-rejecting world, it's setting the Christ-rejecting world up for welcoming the things that they're going to see, I believe, in, in, in the near future, uh, honestly. It, and, and so it's the desensitizing. All of these things, when we're reading about Swift, when we're seeing about these things, the pokies that were going into uh, people's arms, everything that we're seeing right now is not only set, uh, setting the stage, but it is desensitizing people. So it's a, you know, I mean, we got a two-story house, right? Well, how do you climb the stairs? Well, one, maybe two stairs, steps at a time, right? But it, it, it keeps on moving in that direction to where when those things that we read about in the Word actually take place and, uh, and the show is live, so to speak, people are going to be ready for it. They're desensitized for it. Okay. So everything is moving exceptionally fast in, in this regard. We already, we already can look around. We see it's going on with Israel, Russia, Iran. We can look at all the geopolitical things that are taking place, mm -hmm. the massive conditioning. I've, I've said this, in fact, this is really the premise of my book. Um, the mark of the beast, uh, what's necessary for the, the tech part of the mark of the beast to come about is the conditioning of the masses. And the conditioning right. is what has been taking place in every facet of society now for a long time, but it's really, that's been stepped up. The gaslighting, uh, the, the um, White House being, uh, you know, saying, hey, um, 
Easter slash Resurrection <sighs> Sunday is Transgender Day, and then saying they never said that. I mean, that's gaslighting. That is getting, right. that's uh, saying th this whole thing, causing people to go crazy, to get mad, to get angry. All of it is part of it. Uh, saying a boy is a girl, a girl is a boy. Uh, all this stuff, all the conditioning is taking place. So I look at, so that's there. That's necessary. Satan knows it is. So that's, we're, we're living through it, folks. If, the, if, we can, uh, if we have a Bible, we can understand that's why this happening. But going back to SWIFT, uh, we have digital currency in 12 to 24 months. That's crazy. And then yeah, what's going on in Australia right now, as Alex Newman says, America is next. You're saying artificial intelligence, then artificial general intelligence. And then this is uh, from one of your updates, artificial super intelligence could arrive by 2027. Right. So, I mean, right. we are looking at this, is, and, and you're talking about quantum computing. You know, you look at this and go, wow. And, and we've got to understand that not only do things have to go cashless, and they are going cashless, guys. Um, we're, we're seeing this. We're watching this happen um, before our very eyes. And we're gonna, I, I do want to talk a little bit more about this whole SWIFT thing Please here do. Uh, in, a, in yeah. a moment. But when, we, when you introduce something like artificial intelligence, okay, into this, look, the Antichrist is limited, even when he becomes possessed by, by Satan himself, right? Satan is just one being, all right? So uh, as, as powerful as the adversary is, he's got his limitations big time, okay? So there's a number of things that I believe are going to come into focus. And when you introduce quantum computing, artificial intelligence, all of the different uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, levels there, and, and who knows if there'll even be more, right? They're going to have to be able to have the ability like that to be able to know who is doing what when. All right? So we are, what we are witnessing is the setup for total absolute control. I mean, where do you go where there's not surveillance, by the way, on everything that you do? Your phones are watching you. You watch your TV. Your TV watches you, right? I mean, we've got, uh, what is it, like the ring doorbells and all of those different things. Those are watching. They're not only watching everyone else, but they're watching you coming and going as well. Let's remember that, okay? So it's keeping track of you just as much as it's keeping track of everyone else that's delivering something to your door or whatever it is, right? So all of these things are coming together, and it has to come together for a massive surveillance state to be able to have that kind of control. And so that kind of control, guys, I don't care if you live in Las Vegas, Nevada, if you live in, in you know, uh, San Diego, or if you live in the backwoods, somewhere guys there's no way that you will be able to be completely at least in my opinion i don't see it completely off of the grid of of what is gonna what is coming down guys and when we talk about this with uh with slip uh, with swift right the global banking messaging network is currently working on a new platform that will help connect the central bank digital currency, CBDCs, right, now in development uh, to uh, the existing financial system. Listen, according, and this is according to Router. So digital currencies are gaining traction. They're gaining momentum across the world, and around 90% of the world uh, are introducing digital versions of currencies. 90% of the world. Guys, we're talking about China. China's really at the forefront of all of this. Uh, you've got China, you've got the EU, right? And when you look at the world's largest economies, what is it? It's the United States, uh, China, uh, European Union, right? So for us to be able to do business on the global scene, the United States has to follow suit. There's no way that the United States can't, and everything is moving in that direction and with those platforms. Listen to this. They said that we're looking at a roadmap to... Um, uh, product uh, productize uh, launch uh, as a product right in the next 12 to 24 months it's moving out of the experiential uh, or experimental stage towards something that is becoming reality again on a global scene and think about this this one really got me recently cbdc's were launched in countries like jamaica nigeria Okay, so the United States is going to move in that direction. We're not going to be upstaged uh, by Jamaica, 
Okay, we're not going to be upstaged by Niger Nigeria or by the Bahamas like it lists on here uh, as well. So again, this is the direction it's going, and things are moving very, very quickly with that, for sure. Wow. Absolutely. This is just a really amazing. All right. So yep. we have SWIFT. We have what's going on in Australia. We, we know it's coming here. We have AI, AGI, ASI. We have all of these things coming together. Now I'm going to throw another one at you. You also uh, recently were talking about the World Health Organization and their <laughs> digital gulag. Um, I mean, we, we keep talking about what's coming in May. Kurt, I remember last year, uh, people were talking about May of 2023. You and I, I remember right. you said it, I have said it. Sure. Hey, sure. don't worry so much about May of 2023. What's coming is May of 2024, right. when that's when they're gonna wanna ratify everything. So right. we have the WHO, the World Health Organization, a digital gulag there. What do you see coming in May? And can you work out this digital gulag? Obviously, we know it with the things you already said, but right. what else do you see tied to the World Health Organization? Well, what we're seeing is, is it's all interconnected. And I know that we focus so much on the food aspect of all of this, which, by the way, I don't know if you saw this, um, but Biden's beef, <laughs> excuse the pun again, with America, um, but the uh, Paraguay import proposal we wish that we were joking about. I mean, the U.S. has banned receiving meat, beef from Paraguay for 25 years. Now things are changing with that as well, right? Well, why? Well, we've got the largest fire that they had there in, in Texas history, guys. And it took out the, the areas uh, there in Texas that that took out, by the way, just so happened to be, right? Oh, a coincidence, right? No, I don't believe in coincidence. Just so happened to take out the, the areas that are uh, the majority of where we get our beef from, from Texas. I mean, we are talking about so much, so much cattle uh, that died as a result of that right we are at, uh, at such incredible lows right now in our country in our if you want to call it meat production wow. uh it's absolutely serious guys while in the meantime our country is growing through legal uh, and illegal uh, immigration as well, right? But people got to eat, right? We've got a tremendous problem on our hands here. The World Health Organization, the World Economic Forum, they are both buddies in this whole in this whole thing. But now, when we're talking about World Health, though, guys, listen, it's even more than the food. But, but think about this. So they're coming against our food. We need our food, right? They're coming against our, uh, our, our financial system. They're coming against the, do you know that one half, one half of the water, half of the water in the United States is tainted right now. Wow. Half of the water in the United States is tainted. Wow. Okay, we've got a serious problem here. And I think that, that by and large, Americans gotta get their head out of the sand and stop being an ostrich and wake up and smell the roses. See what's really going on here, guys. America is in deep, deep trouble. And you had mentioned, by the way, you had mentioned the uh, the transgender uh, whatever yeah. day that uh, that Biden proclaimed uh, that to be right. And guys, listen, this is not by any. And then and then he says, I did, well, I didn't do that. He doesn't know what he's coming coming or going yeah. or what he's doing, uh, you know. But but it was done, okay. It was done. And listen, that was done on Resurrection Sunday. We ain't calling it Easter Sunday. Easter is, is the celebration of, of the false god Ishtar, right? And now listen, it's not by any mistake. Look, I, he, he doesn't know what he's doing, but the demonic forces and entities and entities behind him, they know exactly what they're doing. And the scripture says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? But against those powers, those principalities, rulers of darkness, wickedness in high places. Places. This is a spiritual warfare that has physical manifestations, and the physical manifestations are things just like we saw on Resurrection Sunday, that whole proclamation uh, that he made, guys, absolutely ridiculous, because um, the goddess Ishtar is what? The goddess of sex, sexuality, right? Uh, all of those things. That's what she is, and, and it was on that day of all days 
it's, it's not it's not done on uh, on some other uh, religious on that day right there there's no mistake about it guys america is under attack we're under attack from china we're under attack at the border but the greatest thing is we are under spiritual attack and that attack is affecting the uh the very fabric of our nation the very fabric of our nation. And when we've got the United Nations, listen, when we've got the United Nations and the United States, what was this, a week, maybe a week and a half ago, I don't know, now abstaining in that vote, guys, that's absolutely huge. When the United Nations is coming against Israel like that and the United States is abstaining, guys, things are moving quickly and I believe that judgment is coming to America. I, I believe we've crossed the Rubicon. Big time. Uh, we've Big time. been. Uh, we were. I. I, th I think we're already under judgment. I know a lot of people will say, "How could you say that?" Well, in Romans chapter one, to me, it seems really simple. God right. says the third time um, after he he, he says uh, when he when he calls out the people, the third time he calls them out for doing the things that they do. He says, "I will turn you over to a reprobate mind. I'll give right. you over to your passions. I'll turn you over to a reprobate mind." Uh, right. The third time. So a reprobate or debased mind. When you look at what happened transgender day, we've been turned over to this, this reprobate mind. Right. How else could we have leaders that make decisions like this? And the people, go, listen to this, Kurt. Check this out. You, you probably have already seen this. I'm sure you have. But these are LGBTQ days of celebration. There are on the calendar... 145 days on the calendar celebrating LGBTQ. March oh, 21 yeah. through 25, I won't go through all of it. Health and Awareness Week for LGBTQIA+. Uh, March 31, we already know. April 6, International Asexuality Day. April mm -hmm. 13, International Day of Pink, Day of Opposing Homophobia. April 14th, Day of Silence. April 26th, day, uh, Lesbian Visibility Day. 145 of these days. I, right. I, it's crazy. We've been oh, given over to, to reprobate to mind. I don't think there's any other way to describe what we are seeing. Now, you mentioned, I mean, I have all kinds of things to ask you here. But I just look at, you start putting everything together. I want to go back to, I want to come back to Israel and sure. what happened with the U.S. Uh, uh, abstaining from voting right? Essentially saying, Israel, you're on your own, right? Right. So with that, let's go back to Texas and what happened there with the cattle and the fire. Uh, I mean, I got to look at Maui and, and ask you this, Kurt, do you know if, if anything that was painted blue didn't burn in Texas? Right. It, it, like, I don't, I don't I know mean, about seriously, that Texas, I mean, you look at this and you go, how could, how could these things actually all be happening at a time when Strange. the borders are open? It appears to me the borders are blown wide open to destroy America. You flood it with massive amounts of illegal Mexicans, and then in that you mix terrorists and Chinese nationals and Chinese. others. Yes. So you create you create different problems. You overwhelm the system with the volume of people from South America, Mexico, and then you bring in terrorists too, and then you ship in meat from Paraguay because you've killed all the cattle here. Bill Gates is buying up farms to do solar power and bugs. The right. World Economic Forum has evolved. The World Health Organization has formed. We have this threat of an economic catastrophe, a threat of a famine, a threat of all these different things that are all developing at the exact same time, crash the economy, bring right. in digital currency. Digital tracking is already in Australia coming here. And we say, oh, this is just... It's, you know, everything's just normal. <laughs> right, right. And, oh, let's throw in ISIS into the mix again, you know. Uh, they're rearing their ugly head again. I don't know if you saw this, but ISIS right now is threatening, here specifically, um, Christians and Jews all over the globe, and specifically in Israel and in the United States. They are, they are, they are literally calling on, on Islam to uh, massacre, murder Christians and Jews right now during Ramadan. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I thought, I thought Islam was the religion of, of peace and, and all that kind of stuff. It is. You Ask know? the LGBTQ community who supports Islam. Yeah, go right. over there and try and live that way. That makes In no fact, sense. My, my midweek yeah. is about the persecution 
the Bible is very clear in the last days, persecution will increase against Jews and Christians. Right. And that's the direction that's going. I mean, you throw all these things in, in the mix. Right. Yeah. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah. If, if you say that you are LGBTQ over there in that part of the world, they will literally take you to a high building and throw you off of the building but in, to kill you. But in Israel, you'll be okay. They won't well, do yeah, that. Yeah, especially in Tel Aviv. Especially in Tel Aviv, you'll be celebrated. Yes. But in the in the countries, in the nations that the LGBTQ supports, they'll kill them. Yeah. They'll kill you. It's just, I mean, there's this mind-boggling stuff Doesn't that is sense. going on. No. Uh, okay, so back to Texas, because I totally threw you off of that. I look at the, this whole thing with the cattle. I, it's very dis, It's very troubling to me. It is very troubling because we're seeing, guys, we're seeing, oh, wait, I got to get off onto something else here too while we're talking about food, is what they're doing uh, with pork, right? Putting mRNAs oh, yeah. uh, in, in the, or allowing that. Now the FDA allows that. Guys, they do it with pork today. They're going to do it with the chicken tomorrow. They're going to do it with the, with the beef the next day. Um, they are literally messing with the food supply. And well, why would they want to mess with the food supply? Well, I'll tell you what, it's all about money and power right well how do they make money anything you watch on tv you watch about all these commercials they're putting on like broadway productions for every kind of pharmaceutical that's out there have you, have you seen that yeah they're it's like dancing you, you, it's like every it's everything is about a pharmaceutical no wonder why right. revelation chapter 18 because of their sorceries the great exactly. men of the earth the, the pharmaceutical so you look at that you got to be careful not to go too far down this path right now right right right, right. but at the same time Got to got to call us out. What what makes us think that we know this about pork because that was advertised that they aren't already doing it with beef or chicken? A and by the way, it was several years ago the University of California Riverside developed this for lettuce. The the mRNAs in lettuce. Right, right. Well, and you said, what makes us think that they're not already doing this with the other things? Well, they are in in other ways. So, for example, I'm sure that you saw what, what's going on with uh, with Chick-fil-A's, right, with the antibiotics. Yeah, they said, no, we're not going to say no antibiotics anymore. Right. When they've always said, because they're all caving, guys, they're all going to cave eventually. There'll be some that'll hold out longer than the rest of them uh, will. But for them to stay, for these different companies to stay in business, they've got to cave. It's kind of like what's going on in, in uh, the, you know, the People's Republic there of, of California right now. $20 and a minimum oh, wage. Wow. Holy man, cow, man. This has liberal fast food owners upset with the governor. Finally, yeah. Finally, that's the only good thing coming out of it, but it's awful. You, you see uh, in and out saying, hey, we got to double our prices. Or, I mean, I, I can imagine it. Huh. it. I mean, it wouldn't, you know, all these places starting to close in California. It's, I mean, the, the people who run this state are idiots. Yeah, seriously. And seriously. evil. They're idiot. They're, they're evil idiots. How's that? I mean, uh, how, much, uh, uh, how much are they going to charge for a Big Mac? Uh, like, I don't know, 50 bucks. I, I, yeah, yeah, I hear I, some places are already up to like 15 bucks or something like that. So I've heard 18. 18 I'm hearing 18, bucks. something like that. But you know so, what? Uh, Do you think this wow. is intentional to force companies into bringing in robots? I think it's to force companies to bring in robots. I think it's to force companies to change uh, how they do their meats, right? Mm -hmm. To be able to introduce more of the various fillers. Like the bugs, like we're talking about Fillers, with Bill Gates, three D printing, all of this kind of stuff. It is this is a total uh, change of everything in the world as we know it right now. I mean, what what does it even say in uh, what is it here? Um, uh, I, I forget where it is right now. First Timothy is it? First Timothy First about Timothy uh, four, uh, yeah. What's that? Yeah, about abstaining, uh, forcing th them to abstain from, from meats and all of this kind of stuff, right? Because, hey, the cows are bad and the, the meats are bad and, and all of that kind of stuff. You got to eat bugs, right? We're trying to, we, we bring in exterminators to kill the bugs. Now they're saying, oh, don't kill the bugs. Let's eat the bugs. It's madness. This is absolute madness. By the way, they're putting some of this in your dog and cat food right now introducing some of the bugs and so a number of people are reporting right now that they're having issues with the dogs and cats not wanting to eat the food that they've always ate before 
because they're introducing more and more of this into that food. Yeah. It, it messes with your internal system. Your, 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 your body doesn't properly digest that stuff, nor is it supposed to. So okay? dogs, are, dogs are smart enough not to eat it. And these and the people at listen the people at the top right. I guarantee you they aren't eating bugs. I was talking with Alex right. Newman, you know Alex Newman, yeah. Yeah. journalist. So uh, I don't know if I should. Well, I'm sure he said it publicly, so I'll say it publicly. I hope I don't get in trouble for this. Please forgive me, Alex. But he is at one of the COP meetings. I don't remember which year it was. You know the the climate meetings, and we're going to save the world. And you know they're telling you you got to eat bugs while. They're serving all of the people who go there steaks, <laughs> real steaks, not from right. real beef that they probably got from Texas ship, shipped there. You know, oh, that's, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah, it's probably Wagyu. Yeah, they know, don't, yeah, they don't eat, they don't eat these the things. So, but doesn't that right. fit with Revelation chapter 6 where you have the rider on the black horse, right. uh, don't harm the oil or the don't wine, but the everybody wine. else is is suffering through famine economic catastrophe eating bugs all us sure. peasants have to comply but the people at the top who are making the rules they'll never comply because they know these things are lies it also right. reminds me of revelation chapter 18 where the the 10 kings they destroy the harlot because they know that it's a it's a system that is full of lies and they use the system to get the control of the people. And that is right. what we are watching with all of this that's going on. The system is controlling the masses. The, uh, it's amazing how many people actually believe this is a good idea. That's the startling it, it, thing. Yeah, seriously, seriously. Well, when you've got out there, you've got Nervous Nancy and Gruesome Newsome, right? Those two, they're, they're, another, uh, they're related, you know, I don't know if everybody knows that or not, but they're related. And uh, those two right there, I mean, my goodness, you have Nancy out there going and getting her hair done. Wait a minute, I thought we were supposed to avoid going all these places. You've got Newsome. Yeah. yeah, you got Newsom eating in one of the finest restaurants on his birthday, one of the finest restaurants on planet Earth, okay, with tons of people all gathered at a big table when, when I thought there were uh, limits to how many people. Hardly any of them had, you know, diapers on, you know, what, what, what we're talking about here, right? So, hey, I thought what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? Well, maybe not so. Yeah, they're liars. It's just it's just more they evidence of how much they're liars. By the way, everybody, I have more questions to ask Kurt, but you guys want to ask questions too. So, Kurt, do you have a few more minutes? Of course. Okay, Absolutely. so send in your questions. Put the word question in all caps and uh, send them in. Uh, send them in now. I should have asked you guys to send them in about 10 minutes ago, but nevertheless, uh, here we are. So let me, uh, let me, let me jump down here. Um, uh, you, you already talked about the food supply and so forth. What would you say are your most uh, unexpected prophetic trends or events that you have observed this year? Think about that for a minute. I'm going to make this announcement. Hey, everybody, on Monday, coming up this following Monday, um, I've got exciting, I've got a whole bunch of exciting stuff coming up, but I'm really excited. I have a special guest, never had him on before, first time ever. Uh, Alan Didio is going to be joining me this coming Monday, uh, April 8th, you know, Eclipse Day. Alan's going to join me Ooh. April 8th at 2 o'clock p.m. And uh, it, he's from Encounter today. Many of you probably already know who he is. Uh, it's going to be a great time. I'm really uh, blessed to have him on for the first time ever. Uh, but anyways, that'll be coming up Monday. Okay, Kurt, back to you. What are some of the most unexpected prophetic trends that, or events that you've observed so far? Uh, well, I would say the rate at which the church is being attacked yeah. uh, from every angle right now. Um, you know, this is something that we're not accustomed to in the United States. Uh, people in many other areas are accustomed uh, to the church coming under attack. You know, the spiritual, you want to talk about the spiritual attack. Uh, I, I'm sure that you probably saw um, the the video or whatever, what uh, what went down there at JD's church, in fact, a couple of weeks oh, ago. Oh, yeah, or, just uh, or something like Sunday, that. right? Like, right. I yeah. mean, he's talking, he's, he's getting into the book of Revelation, 
I think he was in chapter one or just starting off or whatever, and he's talking about the rapture and uh, a demonically possessed woman out there just screams out liar. And, and guys, I, you, you follow that whole thing and everything. I mean, it was, it was full on demonic. I think a lot of Christians in America today really don't recognize the, de the demonic, uh, uh, spiritually evil influence uh, that is behind people and, and things that are taking place right now. And just the attack, the attack that's going on. I mean, for crying out loud, I mean, how many of us, Tom, that, are, that aren't woke out there, but that we're actually speaking about the truth of the gospel. Uh, we're speaking about what is happening. We're bringing light to what's happening. And w we got security, you know, uh, all over the place in our churches, uh, around us and every, I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, if you would have said to me years ago, you know, you got to have security around and this and that and, and watching and I'd have been like, you got to be kidding me. Are you serious? Oh, it's but nuts. I mean, that's, that's where, yeah, but the rate at which the church is being attacked right now in America, the spiritual attack, the physical attacks, I mean, guys, the attacks going on against churches right now, and so much of it's actually taking place in the parking lots of the churches, which is very interesting, um, before they even uh, get inside. Guys, it's off the rails. It's something like like 800, 600 or 800% just within the past few years increase in the United States. Just the but US. many Christians, yeah. yeah, it's just in the U.S. Many Christians don't know that. So, I mean, this is alarming, guys. This is how persecution really gets started. Yeah. This is how it really gets started. I would say the other thing is the dramatic fall of, of what we would maybe call the, the American empire. The dramatic fall of the American empire. We are falling big time, guys. And uh, I believe that, that that is what has to happen ultimately for the United States to assimilate into the beast empire. Excellent, excellent observations. And both are so spot on. Uh, uh, we're going to get to a question from Lucy Hubbard in just a second, Lucy, so hang in there. But, uh, you know, when you look at what's happening within the church, here it is, Transgender Day just the other day on Resurrection Sunday. Yet, it was a transgender person that burnt down a, a church the other day. You hear about that? No, that's celebrated uh, by the transgender community. But, but we see, I think these things are demonic as we see these things developing. Oh, yeah. Also, interesting when it comes to the increased persecution against the, the Christians and the Jews, I'll say genuine believers because the woke churches are supporting the persecution, you know? Right. Um, but Christians have to be targeted, especially right. those who support Israel because we stand spiritually in the way of the enemy going after Israel. So imagine Absolutely. after the rapture, what's gonna happen when you start looking at, at things. Okay, Lucy Hubbard asks this, um, do either you or I, Kurt, believe there will be a great revival before the rapture or will uh, non-believers go to the tribulation in their unbelief? Um, uh, obviously, a, a, I, I mean, I would say, Kurt, there could be a, a great revival, but the Bible doesn't doesn't seem to lead that way. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. I hope for revival. I pray for revival. We want revival. Um, are we going to see that happen, though? You know, I guess only time will tell. Um, you know, when we when we read in the word, we see uh, that there is uh, speaking really specifically of the time that we're at right now, the tickling of ears. Right. And so and why is there the tickling of ears? Because people want their ears tickled. Right. And who's it talking about? We're not talking about those out there that that are just living their own life, doing their own thing. But it's the tickling of the ears of what is assumed to be. And I would say that assumed to be the church, okay? And so because we have the true church and the false church that are right now running uh, side by side, right? But they all get the category of the church, right? But they're not. Even Jesus himself said, look, you're going to say to me on that day, oh, Lord, Lord, I'm going to say, look, I, I, get away from me. I never knew you, right? You knew me. I didn't know yeah. you. Interesting, isn't it? I, I didn't never know you. knew you. I never knew yeah. you. Yeah. So, you know, we can ask people all day long in America, do you know Jesus? Look, I mean, before you came to Christ, I'm sure you would have said so. Before I came to Christ, I would have said, I know Jesus. 
but I didn't know him experientially. I didn't know him no. as Lord and Savior. And because I did not know him as Lord and Savior uh, and have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in my life, he didn't know me, yeah. okay? He didn't know us. So uh, we hope for it and we pray for it. Do I think on a, on a, on a large scale that it's going to happen at this point? Uh, I don't know, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, I, it could happen. You know, it, it could. It could. We, but the Bible teaches there will be a form of godliness, but the people deny the power thereof. Right. First Timothy right. chapter four, they'll give, be given over to doctrines of demons. Second right. Timothy chapter four, they won't endure sound doctrine, but they'll want to be right. taught nice things in churches. So we see this is the general consensus. But at the same time, it's it also it really speaks loudly to us as believers in Jesus and believers say he's coming again to tell people about Jesus. They've got to hear the gospel. The most important message we had to have is Jesus came the first time. Yes, he's coming again. So that's the warning. But listen, that's the warning. And he came the first time. You can only be forgiven through him. And we have that message because after the rapture, there's, I believe, Kurt, there's going to be many people coming to faith in Christ because we shared the truth with them. Amen. And we'll meet them in heaven. Oh, they'll come to faith. We will meet them in heaven. But folks, we say all the time, uh, our citizenship is in heaven. I'm going to store my treasure in heaven. I'm going to live for Christ now. Well, let's, uh, let's prove it by how we live and, and uh, with, with all that we do say, okay, I really do believe this. Therefore, we have the greatest message that people need to know. Jesus is coming again, but he came the first time. The most important message. All right. Christine S. says, your thoughts on CERN restarting on April 8th, uh, Eclipse Day. <laughs> oh, the eclipse. Oh, lions and tigers and bears. Oh, oh my. my. Oh, Oh, I can't wait till we get past this whole eclipse thing, you know. <laughs> Can I, yeah, so, I okay, I this is, that, I'll so, give okay. you my take. Yeah, okay. Uh, and folks, I know this is going to hurt a lot of people's feelings. I think there's um, um, a lot of uh, to do about nothing. That's what I think, all right? Now, I, gotta, I want to be careful because I know a lot of people are really getting swayed by it. Listen, I think, right. personally, I think CERN is a really evil thing yes. that's a very, yes. very bad idea. But why are they doing it on April 8th? Probably because a bunch of prophecy people are worked up about the eclipse. So it wouldn't surprise me if they said, hey, let's get the prophecy people really spinning their wheels and let's do CERN on April 8th, the eclipse day. Right. Um, you know, uh, it was reported that there were seven Ninevehs in the path of CERN. Well, they found out there's not seven Ninevehs right. in the path of CERN. So, you know, you, you know, it's, it's we really, I, I want to caution us, especially who look at the Bible and Bible prophecy, stick to the word. There's a lot of distractions out there. Um, could bad things happen on April 8th? Yeah, they happen. There's probably bad things happen today and happen tomorrow will happen the next right. day. Right. And, and yeah, but we, but be very careful about going too far into those paths. Um, CERN is bad. I have no, I, I totally believe CERN is really, really bad. I believe Absolutely. demonic things are there. Something might come of it one day, might come of it April 8th. But, but let's not get distracted by these things. Right. I, I believe that, that CERN is, is, uh, is utilizing and looking for portholes, uh, you know, to, uh, to a realm that uh, you, you don't want to open up that Pandora's box by, by any means. Um, you know, now when we talk about the, um, the eclipse day there, uh, what is it, the 8th, I think it is, yeah. or something like that. Uh, eclipse day. Guys, there's an eclipse every year. Okay. Um, and, and I know that we've all got, you know, views on that and everything. And, um, uh, this is what I'm going to say uh, on that, is that bad things happen every day, and bad things are going to happen on that day as well. They're going to happen in America and out of America. Um, 
And yes, the, the, the scriptures talk about, you know, signs in the sun and moon and stars and those things. And yes, we read about uh, the blood moons, the blood red moons, or whatever you want to call that. When we're reading about those blood moons, uh, first of all, we got to understand that we're talking about that in the midst of the tribulation. Um, it has no significance uh, that I see um, before the tribulation. And I know we went through the whole blood moon thing some however many years ago, that whole thing. But uh, it has no significance uh, outside of the tribulation as far as that goes. Um, now, when we're talking about the eclipse, I know there's, there's wonderful and great people that, that think, hey, maybe the eclipse, you know, this eclipse in America is a... Uh, is speaking, uh, you know, a bad, you know, omen or whatever you want to call it here for America. I think, I think what uh, Joe Biden did on, on Sunday is, is far worse uh, in, my, in my personal opinion, in my estimation. Uh, I think what they're trying to do with, uh, with money, digital money, with SWIFT, I think is far worse um, when we read about uh, really how that's going to go down the road uh, in the book of Revelation. I think that's far worse. Um, but with this, uh, with this, I think it's going to be something that's going to be interesting to see, to behold, whether you look at it in person or, or online, uh, whichever it may be. But I don't see any, myself speaking here again, I don't see any direct correlation um, between that and, and really uh, anything else. Um, so I, I, I guess everyone will, will all see. Uh, we, but I'm not worried about it. I, I'm not worried about it. And when I think of, of uh, when you start thinking of these different dynamics, you know, all the, the blood red moons, everything else, and CERN, this in Revelation chapter 9, where we have the demons come out of the bottomless pit, hey, there may be a connection at that time with something like that, you know, but um, I, I would be careful on, I've followed that CERN thing so much, and I'll confess, Kurt, Years ago, I got into the blood red moons, 2008. I, it's like, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So right. it's just being very careful and understand how easy it is to get caught up in those. But we really do need to be careful. Um, right. uh, Audrey Westmoreland, will the non-believers hear the trumpet sound like the believers who are caught up to meet the Lord in the air? That's an interesting question. Yeah, it is an interesting question. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I tend to think that they won't, um, but that's just that's just my own take on that. Um, if the unbelievers are going to hear that trumpet sound, um, that's a, that's a trumpet call. Uh, that's for us. Um, I don't see any words in scripture, um, and I'd like to hear what your thoughts are on that. But I don't see any words in scripture where uh, where they're going to hear that. But um, so I I, I think. Maybe something like what we have with the Saul when he becomes the Apostle Paul, when the Lord right. converts him. He gets knocked to the ground. He hears the Lord's voice distinctly. He can see him. All of these things. Everybody around him was afraid. They knew something happened, but they didn't hear nor see what Paul heard and saw. Right. They knew something was going on. And I would right. guess it's probably going to be like that because there's a shout. I'm guessing the Lord's voice when we are caught up to meet the Lord in there. And no doubt when we are caught up, it's going to get it's going to get a lot of attention. I do wonder, though, you remember the old Absolutely. Left Behind movies? Planes will be crashing because pilots will be raptured. Well, now with AI and all this technology driving flying planes, planes will just fly. I don't think if pilots are caught up, raptured, Certain things will keep going. Self-driving cars could be interesting by the time the rapture takes place. It'll be really interesting because either either there's going to be the biggest cover-up in all of of history, right? Or what they're going to say is, "Hey," uh, which is actually what I lean to is what I'm about to say is that they play into it. And they say, well, actually, this is what happened, you know, and and they were taking it. Look, they, they keep on pushing this whole UFO or, or there's another name for it now or acronym that they have for yeah. it now uh, narrative out there. And uh, and that's really what I think that they're going to utilize is, that, hey, they were all taken. You guys are left here and and, you know, go on from there. But uh, but I, I don't believe. Look, we're going to hear that because we hear the voice of the Lord. 
We have the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're, you know, and again, just like you said there uh, with Saul of Tarsus, uh, and God ended up changing his name to, to Paul and everything, that was something meant for him. Look, everyone's gonna, gonna recognize something happened. The effects of it is, that, is what's gonna be recognized, but I don't believe that anyone's going to, going to hear that. That's something that's just really unique and special just for us. That's, that's my take on it. Yeah. Here's another thought. If we go back four years, everybody's locked down, right? couldn't really go to people's houses or stuff like that. If the rapture took place at a time like that mm -hmm. um, and people were caught up, you wouldn't know for a while because right. you would think, oh, they're just avoiding us or they don't want to come out of their house yet or whatever. I mean, literally Could things can go on for a while where people are just thought of as, yeah, they're just, they're just hunkering down. You know what I mean? Right. I, I, interesting. All right. Jason yep. Garza, what? No, go ahead. Jason Garz asks, how long can Israel wait until they attack Iran's nuke facility, factories, capabilities? You know? Interesting. How long can Israel wait before they do that? Uh, that's a great question. You know, here's the thing is that we know at some point Ezekiel 38 is going to happen, right? Russia, Turkey, um, others, Iran involved in that. Um, and th this is one of the reasons why I say that, look, Russia is not going to be destroyed in this. In fact, Russia and what's going on with Ukraine, I think Russia is getting stronger. They're using, they're using a lot of their junk, uh, if you would, a lot of their junk armaments right now to, so that they have the good stuff to use for another day. And uh, I believe that other day is going to be Ezekiel 38. We know that they've grown in financial strength. Uh, as well, the whole, uh, if you want, I don't know if you want to call it embargo or, or whatever against them, uh, they've gotten actually even better off financially as a result, a result of this war. Um, you've got the Russian, or part of the Russian fleet that has entered into the Red Sea, I think there's a, a week, week and a half ago or so. Well, that's an interesting development. Now we've got this whole attack that happened. I'm, I'm sure most of the viewers on there, on here have already seen uh, the attack that uh, Israel launched, I think they used F-35s or something like that, there uh, in Damascus, which was absolutely a fascinating thing uh, in and of itself, right? And, but, uh, but look, guys, Iran, Russia, all of them, they've got to be around for Ezekiel 38. That to, that to me is the key. Ezekiel 38 hasn't happened yet. So that tells me that, that to some degree, and, and we know that Iran keeps on using her proxies, right? Her proxies there down in the south with Hamas, her proxies there in the north, um, whether with the Houthis or um, with Hezbollah in Lebanon, uh, her friends there in, in Syria, all of that. So uh, Iran's going to survive. Uh, I don't know if we're going to see where, where something like that takes place or not. I mean, maybe, maybe it will. But at some point, there's going to be that hook in the jaw that's going to take place there against uh, or with Russia, right? They're going to be hooked to come on down there and bring their friends, their coalition along with them to Israel. So how far will this go? Well, I'll tell you this. I don't think that things are going to go to the point of, uh, of nuclear, uh, I don't see that, mm -hmm. you know. Technology is even advancing beyond nuclear now, which is quite interesting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. With the ways Big you time. can destroy a country. So, Gail Big Tracy, time. last question. Do you feel we will see a, an election or at least a fair <laughs> election in November? <laughs> we'll answer that in a second, everybody. But first, Kurt, how can people track with you? Uh, you can track with me and just uh, go on to YouTube. It's probably probably the easiest for, for most people. You can check us out on YouTube. Just type in on the search engine, Kurt Reed, C-U-R-T-R-E-E-D. You'll find us on there, our videos. You'll be able to connect to our website, our app. Uh, we just started on Rumble uh, recently as well, all of those things. And, uh, yeah, I would love for you guys to connect with us and with, uh, with what we're doing here. That would be great. That'd be wonderful. Make sure you do. We'll get to the question in a second. Uh, just one more reminder. Bishop Alan Didio will be joining me on Monday. That's Monday, April 8th. That's Eclipse Day, CERN Day, all of that, April 8th. Bishop Alan Didio, first time guest on here. It's going to be terrific. He's from Encounter today. And I'll be at the Eagle Forum in Buena Park this Saturday with Alex Newman, if you could join me there. Okay, Kurt, 
let's roll with this. How can, <laughs> what do you think with the election? Is it going to happen or will it be fair? And do me a favor, don't get me <laughs> censored in your answer. Okay. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, the same ones that keep on coming after you. What are they afraid of? That's what gets me. If they really yeah. believe, listen, I just got to say that if they really believe that, that, that you and I are just off our rocker, then wouldn't they want us to continue to say things that would make us look like sure. idiots? I mean, they let you talk about Santa right. Claus. They know that's not true, right? Right, right. So, why, so if they think it's not true, yeah. Right. You yeah, would want kind of somebody to fall on there. their face. So the very fact that they keep on coming after you, coming after me, coming after Brandon, uh, after Billy, the reason why they're doing that is because deep down inside, they know what we're saying is exposing them, and it is true. So um, what do I believe? Are we going to have elections? Uh, I lean towards the fact that, that we will, although it, there is a possibility that we won't. There could be great civil unrest, um, but I tend to think that the civil unrest may come as a result of the the uh, elections. Uh, that's something that I tend to think. But um, now, will those elections be legit? I think is the greater uh, the greater question there. So uh, well, Hillary, hopefully, the word le "legit" is an okay word to use now. I hope. But um, well, uh, were you going to say? What were well, you Hillary say? Clinton st states that she was, you know, robbed because you know. Uh, everything was against her, of course. Of course, of course. We feel so sorry for her. <laughs> yeah, legit. Aww. It's gonna be inter <laughs> it's gonna be I interesting. I mean, we are in an interesting heart. year. I, I can tell you're heartbroken. Yeah. I can tell. No, I, I am. I, I, I'm, I'm troubled. I'm troubled that you know. I'm. I might shed a tear. Are you uh, on her, you're not on her. You're, apparently, you're not on her kill list. Am uh, I allowed to say that? Yet. Yet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it, it, guys, if I die, it's not suicide. Okay. Yeah. With, 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 a, with a rifle to the back of my head, suicide. It, it's not, yeah. Hanging with the rifle you shot with your right arm from 20 feet away. Right, right. Yeah. I, amazing I'll tell you that, how right. that works. Okay. Yeah, it's amazing how that works. Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, I, uh, now, do I, do I trust in, in that thing that's going to happen in November? No, I don't. Where's our I hope? Don't. Where's our hope? Oh, man, my hope is in Jesus. You Amen. know, uh, that's where my vote is for. My vote is for Jesus Christ, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, who shed his precious blood that we can be saved, that we can be redeemed, that our sins aren't just covered, but our sins are washed away by the blood of the lamb. You know, as, as uh, John the Baptist said, behold, the lamb of God, who what? Covers the sins of the world. No, he didn't say that. Who takes away the sins of the world. Guys, look, we have the opportunity for a do-over, man, a do -over over. Amen. I mean, just think about that. This is incredible. This is incredible. The good news, the great news, the fantastic news that we just celebrate and we can celebrate every single day of the year that Jesus is risen. He's risen indeed. And I pray that you've asked him into your heart and into your life. Confess your sins to him and say, Lord, be Lord of my life. I want to be a son of God. I want to be a child of God, a daughter of God. And I want to know where I'm going. I want the assurance of that salvation. Put your trust, your faith, your hope in him. Amen. Thank you, Kerr, for joining us. Great, great time with you today. Thank you, Thank everybody, you. for joining us. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow, seeing you Thursday, seeing you Sunday morning, Sunday night, also Sundays with Kurt and all of the different programs he has. Go to his YouTube yep. channel. Check Thursdays. him out. Kurt, yep. you're just doing a fabulous work. Make sure that you support Kurt. Something Kurt and I both appreciate is if you like, share, and subscribe, it might sound so trivial to you guys, but the algorithms are mm -hmm. necessary in order for us to get the message out there. And it sounds small, but for us it's huge. And we really appreciate yes. likes, shares, and subscribes. Um, they're all free to do. Thank you. We need your prayer more than anything. Absolutely. Uh, so thank you so much for, for these things. God bless you, everybody. Again, thanks, Kurt. Great time with you today. Tell your family I said hi. God bless you. Yours yeah. as well, man. God bless.